Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much and remember blessed. If you are joining me from Africa, Asia, Europe, America, Australia or any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contribution. Please, each time you watch my video, go to the comment section and put down your comments. That is Nigeria's political landscape may be going through a silent but very effective transformation with the emergence of the obedient movement. A popular coinage of supporters of the Labour Party's presidential ticket, consisting of former Governor Peter Rabi as a standard bearer and Senator Yusuf Dati Hibmet, his vice presidential candidate. Just like the proverbial wildfire, the impact of this movement, which has its origins in social media, is surely and steadily being felt around major cities of Nigeria. However, the extent of its impact in the northern reaches of the country remains a bit iffy given the springing up of opposition against its certain political forces, such as Governor Nasir El Rufai of Kaduna State, who just sent detachments of the police to disrupt the group's planned one million man march in Kaduna, the state capital. Right away, we are being joined for a discussion on the subject by Nana Sani Kazaure, a member of the Obi Dati presidential campaign organization, who will also try to find out from her the level of women's involvement in the Labour Party and obedient movement's activities. Great to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank, Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Now let's start in terms of what the general, uh, let's get your own opinion about how the obedient movement generally is going in the northern parts of Nigeria. We've heard, of course, it's wildfire across the sports, but let's get your sentiment on how, um, how much interest is, is garnered in that area? There's a lot of interest in northern Nigeria as regards the Obidati movement. Um, the north has been rife with issues, a plethora of issues that arise, insecurity, underdevelopment, the issues of education, even the issues of having internally displaced people. People are leaving their residence and the economy is coming to a, a grinding halt. And so, yes, the North is very, very interested in the narrative of taking over, uh, 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 of change, of having a new, a, a, a new, a, a new order take over. All right, Nana, um, I understand that, but, but then I will, uh, like an elaborate kind of, you know, uh, insight into the sort of movement that you think that the Obidati uh, movement is creating. And I would like you to uh, start from what happened in Kaduna uh, yesterday. Uh, tell us if truly uh, the One Million Man March was able to hold. I know that Port Harcourt, from what we have seen so far uh, on the social media, Port Harcourt, uh, uh rally seems to be quite big with a number of Nollywood stars being part of that movement. How did it go in Kaduna? And what will you say to uh, what the governor of Kaduna State, Aminu Masari, uh, said about your candidate, saying that nobody knows uh, Obi in the north and that he does not think he has what it takes uh, to make an incursion into the northern votes? People are entitled to their opinions. But you see, the, the reality on ground, it differs. It's a different story altogether. One thing that we can say is that why, it begs the question, why, is, why are they rattled by people that they say are just on social media or that there is no following or there's no garnering of, of people 
wanting this particular uh, candidacy for presidency, you should ask that question. Why are they rattled by us? Why is there a certain feeling that they are threatened? Um, clearly, for, for um, we, I, I remember reading um, on, online that um, Governor El Rufai said that we wouldn't be able to garner even 200 people not to talk of a million. And so I, it begs the question as why would you have to have police? Why, why would it be interrupted? Trust and believe that at a later date, that people will convert, people will still march. So far, like you already rightly pointed out, Port Harcourt, Calabar, and even Nasarawa State next door, we've had peaceful marches. So I see no reason why we ha it, it had to be interrupted yesterday by the Kaduna State Government it means that they have taken note of us and our numbers are growing. Do, do you have details of what actually happened? Uh, does it mean that the, uh, the, the march in Kaduna was truncated by uh, the appearance of the police officers allegedly uh, sent by the Kaduna State Government? But of course, of mm. course, of course. That's, that, that, uh, that's a rhetorical question, Steve. <laughs> of course. It was there to it, the presence of the police was there to put a chink in the armor. In in light of of, of these events that have uh, unravelled with this rally, how does the Labour Party look to address, you know, basically expanding more of its communication in the northern parts of Nigeria? Are you going to continue to face some more resistance, and how do you look to circumvent that reality? The Labour Party movement and the Obidati movement, as far as I know, it's a clarion call. Nigerians are tired. And the North is not exempt from being tired. Underdevelopment is, 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 is glaring. People, people want a change. And so, yes, we're already making those inroads. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just alluding to the fact that there is a very strong social media tool and machinery for the Labour Party. Now, in light of the resistance you've been faced with in the northern parts of Nigeria, how exactly do you intend to communicate more effectively to proposed electorate from those parts of the country? In the northern part of the country? Yes, please. We are already in talks with people we have our women leader, who is also from Gombe State, and we are already making those inroads. It's not, it's, it's, beyond, it's beyond us. The social media presence that you talk about is run by people. They're not robots. And so there is that social media presence, even in the north. It's there. You can see it. There's a growth for, for the movement, even in the north. All right, Nana, let, let me ask you this. I know that uh, all the uh, marches uh, that are holding at the moment are basically like dress rehearsals to the actual campaign, which for the presidential uh, candidates won't start until uh, towards the end of next month. Uh, so my question to you is that... Next after, month. Yes, next month. So after all these dress rehearsal uh, million man marches, uh, what specific strategies do you think... Uh, do you have in place for the Obidati movement when the campaign actually starts? Because you will have almost five full months of campaign that can stretch anybody, that will require enormous resources, that will mean possibly having your uh, flag bearers uh, touching all the 36 states of the Federation. What, strat what strategies, therefore, do you have? And are you ready in terms of the war chest uh, to go the whole log against the more formidable APC and the PDP? Of course we are ready. You can already see that we have garnered a lot of, a, a lot of goodwill from the Nigerian people. And if you, if you believe in something, you will invest in it. So yes, people are, people are investing their time, their money, and their efforts to help in the campaign. As long as it's within the ambit of the law, there's nothing wrong in, in fundraising for, the, for, for, for our campaign to pull through in Nigeria across the 36 states. May I, may I ask you as a follow-up, what you know, uh, got you drawn to 
this movement, the Obidati movement, uh, given the fact that uh, you're possibly not uh, ordinarily a Labour Party uh, uh, supporter, uh, you've got Atiku Abubakar, who's a northerner, uh, and, and then you have the APC having a formidable northern running mate. Uh, my point is, you personally, what is the attraction to the Labour Party and to the Obidati movement for you? The attraction is very simple. Um, we, clam we asked for change and we followed that narrative in, 2020, in 2015. We were promised that change. We didn't get that. And so our tired is actually tired. We didn't get that change. We didn't know where we were headed. We were told that we, it, there would be a change. And we haven't seen it. We are where we are now because the, it goes without saying, the economy is coming to a grinding halt. People can't do business freely. We can't move freely within our own country. And the, 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 the matters of insecurity, look at, look, for, look at, for instance, our tertiary institutions. When you, um, 16 years of the PDP, and now seven years with the APC, cumulatively it's about 70 months. When you put 70 months together, that's, a, that's almost six years that, children ha, uh, that students have lost. We, we, just want, we just want a new order. And we want somebody younger, more vibrant, you know. Nigerians are very, very aware, to, more aware today than we were a few years ago. And that is what attracted me to the, to the narrative and to the promise that the Labour Party holds. So in light Things of just need to change. Yes. And talking about change, in, in light of the attractiveness of what has become um, widely known as a third force pretty much in this race, there is also a widespread criticism that the Labour Party is lacking in an established uh, political structure. What, what would you say in response to that? Um, is this a misconception? Clearly, it's a mis Clearly, that's a misconception. The people are the structure. Without the people, you have no structure. And you can already see that the, the Labour Party, the party to which I belong, is already gathering and gathering. The, the people are moving to the next train, which is the Labour Party. And they're all welcome. Yes, we have structure. And those structures will vote. Yes, people, well, of course, we know that campaign, campaigning is not cheap. Like you rightly pointed out, the, the presidential candidate is not, he, he's not a man without means. He's not a man without his own um, connections. And he's, as we see it today, he's not a man without the support of the Nigerian people. So yes, frugality should not be looked upon as, as foolishness. In fact, it should be applauded. Because that's what we need in this country right now. We need somebody who is frugal, who understands that every penny counts. Not just to throw it around, but to make sure that the resources that we have at our disposal are properly dispersed All and, right. proper, and used properly that, for what yeah. it is meant for. That, that, that's fine. That's fine. Um, um, but beyond prudence, um, what specific change do you think that... Uh, Obidati will bring uh, to bear in governance in terms of redirecting uh, the economy. A lot of people who have accused your candidate of uh, always getting his statistics wrong. Uh, he asks people to verify, but then when they, when they fact check, you know, some of the things he says are not always uh, accurate. Uh, in the area of economy and the area of turning, you know, the country uh, around, what specific uh, expectations do you think that Nigerians should have if will be that movement, you know, gets to Asso Rock next year? One thing that Nigerians must understand, and I would like to put this out in the media, error in statistics doesn't mean that you're wrong. Error in statistics doesn't mean, necessarily mean that you are completely wrong. You go on Google, you type in for information, you get different answers. So it does not mean that he was, he was being untrue with his statistics. What it means is that where he garnered that information from, 
is what he presented. It does not make it untrue. So, so what will he do differently? I, 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 I notice your reference to Kasava Wagbado the other time, and I hope that you know the owners of those of that phrase will not come after you. But what will Obi do differently as president in the area of economy? He has already stated, and very, very clearly too, which is something that really caught my attention, which answers your previous question as to what attracted me to the Labour Party. We will become a more a, a production-based economy as opposed to being a consumer-based economy. And because you know, our, our, our produc pr production lines in Nigeria have come to a halt. They are almost non-existent. And so that's one way that will help it will, it will foster, it, it, it will definitely bring about more jobs for the people. And the fact that we're producing within our own country is a huge leap for Nigeria. It's a huge leap. leap. And on that note, we want to thank you very much for joining us this morning. Nana Sani Kazari, member of the Obidati Presidential Campaign Organization. Many thanks for joining us. Okay, let me start from where you left off about the um, Obasanjo angle to these uh, meetings in London. Well, um, there have been many speculations, but people are saying, at least in the Punch newspaper today, quoting the Punch newspaper, that uh, uh, former President Lucia Obasanjo is trying to push the Peter OB agenda, and he's trying to work on an alliance bef between Peter OB and Yesom Wike. That's the speculation in that newspaper. Uh, today, and that this is the case, according to some of the persons who were interviewed and who claim to know what the story is all about, that uh, you know President Obasanjo is working for a Southeast presidency agenda. But I mean, uh, uh, Chief Olusha Obasanjo himself is capable enough of stating where he stands uh, in the matter and what his choice is. But nobody should be surprised that he got involved in the meeting. As uh, an elder statesman who had declared publicly that he, he, was, he had retired from partisan politics, so that places him in a position to meet persons across the political aisle. But in that same report, uh, some of the commentators said, well, they belong to the Wiki camp, and they do not think that they will work with or for Peter Obi. One or two of them were quoted as saying that they would rather work for Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, considering the fact, you recall, that yesterday we said Alaji Ibrahim Masari, uh, the former uh, president, vice presidential placeholder of the APC, has said that the meeting between uh, Wike and Ashwaju Tinubu is true and real, and that uh, Wike is going to work for the APC, even if he remains in the PDP. PDP. And we said also yesterday, that efforts have been made by the PDP to try to hold on to Wiki. Hence, we had that National Working Committee meeting called by uh, uh, Senator Yochi Ayu. And yesterday I stated some of the big uh, indications of that meeting, including the fact that Ayu does not want to step aside, and that two uh, efforts were made to show that the party is unified and that there is no division within the party. Now, on the back of that, we then have this story also about the uh, presidential candidate of the PDP meeting finally with Yesom Wike in London. Now, you recall that the party had set up a 14-man reconciliation committee. That 14-man reconciliation committee could not make any headway. Led, there is a, a committee, that committee was led by, Adam, uh, by Fintory, Governor Fintory, of uh, Adam State. Yes, of Adam State, who was also uh, at this meeting with uh, Yesom Wike and his allies in uh, London. Now, we heard that that meeting ended in a deadlock because the demands uh, from the Wike group, one, that Atiku can only do one time, and uh, two, that, uh, you know, Atiku uh, uh, Yochi you must go. The other unstated uh, demand in the papers was that uh, Wiki is asking that uh, you know vice president, uh, 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 vice presidential run, uh, the running mate should be dropped. That's uh, Governor Ifan Yokoa of Delta State. So the meeting was deadlocked. Nothing came out of it. 
Now, in the papers today, there are reports that uh, in London, that uh, presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar of the PDP acceded to all the demands. We're still going to get more details on this, I believe. So what demands exactly did he concede to? Did he agree that uh, he would do one term? Did he agree that he will work on uh, Yoshi Ayu uh, leaving the party? Did he, what, what exactly were the agreements? We don't have those details. The only thing we have is the optics. And talking about the optics, that's a phrase from the statement uh, issued on behalf of uh, um, Atiku Abubakar by Paul Ibe, his uh, spokesperson. And Paul Ibe was saying that, look, party members, stakeholders should desist from making statements that will give the impression uh, that the party is divided. And, and statements that could jeopardize the ongoing reconciliation process. So clearly, I mean, that was uh, Atiku Abubakar speaking through his uh, spokesperson yeah. and saying that everybody should calm down. Okay, so I think if you look at it in terms of pragmatism, it makes sense for the PDP uh, to quickly project the impression that there is nothing wrong in the party, that it is one family. Uh, Paul Ibe in the statement was even accusing the, of, uh, accusing the APC for putting out false narratives about division within the, uh, within the uh, PDP, okay? I guess that's a reaction to alleged meetings with the presidential candidate of the APC. So this, as I see it, you know, uh, are the details, but beyond that, a number of uh, categorical statements. Number one, all these meetings that people are holding, yes, Adesua is very right in saying it's an indication that in politics there are no permanent enemies, no permanent friends, there are only permanent interests. Mm -hmm. And politicians can come up with anything, you know, at any time trying to make peace with one another. That's one. The second point is the fact that uh, this is no guarantee that there's still no problems within the PDP. It is no guarantee that there is already firm, concrete, tangible, touchable reconciliation between uh, Wiki uh, camp and the Atiku camp. Nobody should put any big store with it and uh, to it. And that is why Dele Faro to me in his book, Don't Die in Their War, you know, has a very good point. Don't get carried away, you know, with what politicians are doing. Three, why the choice of London? This is uh, an indication of, uh, well, for want of a better word, of a neo-colonial mentality. Any major meeting in, uh, in Nigeria affecting Nigeria affairs, our leaders will jump into the aircraft and they are going to London. It's as if some people are genetically, umbilically tied to the, uh, you know, imperial attachment, uh, colonial attachment to London. It's as if uh, they think better when they are somewhere on the streets of London. And maybe it's a psychological deficit, you know. Let us go to London. Ruben, but there are other things they do in London. Well, they they, yes, they also go there for medical, uh -huh. for medical check They see their doctors while all the meetings uh, also. Because now. we don't have, you uh -huh. know. Which is also hospitals an indictment of the political class. That can do it here in uh, uh, Nigeria. So in terms of optics, it doesn't quite look good. All those meetings that they are holding, they could have had those meetings, you know, at home. And as for those governors, from Sheyin Makinde to Ikpiazu, uh, to Otom, you know, uh, uh, and uh, Wiki himself, I hope they are paying from their pockets. I hope it's not the taxpayers of your state and uh, Benue state and, uh, uh, Wiki, uh, and uh, River, River state, state yeah. that are paying for this uh, junket to London to discuss uh, personal issues, conflict of interest. Uh, they could have done this discussion here. They probably ordered the... Uh, Order the wine, order the water, order the this thing, and give tips to the people that attended to them at the hotel where the meeting was held. And Nigerians could have benefited from that, no matter how small. Enough of this uh, junket over over personal, you know, uh, issues all over the world. The other time they were in Spain. From Spain they moved to Istanbul. From Istanbul the meetings were held in Turkey. From Turkey is now London. Where are they going to go next? I even hear Peter B is going to Germany. They won't end up in Russia. Yeah, Jam yeah, yeah. From Germany is going to the U.S. Yes, you are right. I hope they won't end up in Russia <laughs> to go and hold meetings over the future 
of Nigeria. No, but Ruben, and, Peter Obia and Atikud are using their personal money. Uh, well, not it, government money. Uh, those ones uh -huh. are using their money as long as they are using their money. The other point to make you say is <laughs> that it is ironic that they chose London in a place where a prime minister will emerge on September 5. Since the uh, uh, race for uh, Downing Street began between uh, you know, the Tory leadership, uh, now narrowed down to Liz Truss and uh, Rishi Sunak. I've not had uh, uh, Rishi Sunak or Liz Truss. Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purpose. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you are notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you. And remember us. Bye-bye. See you again. Thank you.